Welcome to Ecosystem Energy Flow. We're going to look at how does energy move through ecosystems. And you maybe remember from when we did the um, when we did the ecosystem basics last week, and you saw that um, we had energy moving from all those different places. You remember what we used to show energy movement? An arrow, an arrow. So we're going to be looking at some of those factors a little bit more now, um, a little bit more specifically. So it says, how does energy move through ecosystems? And I love the engage your brain. It says, find the answer to the following question in the lesson and record it here. There are many kinds of animals at this watering hole. Why aren't they running away from each other? Why do you guys think that they aren't running away from each other? Think about what you know. Okay, so as we read, it says that we're going to be having some vocabulary um, and also using diagrams. So it says diagrams add information to text that appears on the page with them. Active readers pause their reading to review diagrams and decide how the information in them adds to what is provided in the running text. All right, we're going to keep reading on the next page. See you there. Hello, we are going to read about food chains. It says, from producers to consumers to decomposers, the food chain never stops. So as we read, I want you to be thinking about the important members of a food chain. That's what we're going to find out. Um, and so I can see that this has lots of information, but we're going to start um, in these paragraphs on page 219 first, and then we're going to go and look at that food chain. All right. The transfer of food energy from one organism to the next in an ecological community is called a food chain. All right. Now, do you guys see that word ecological? It just means in an ecosystem. Okay. So when we're taking food energy from one living thing to the next, it's called a food chain. Okay. It's that transfer of energy. You got to eat to live. All right. Almost every food chain begins when producers capture the, sun, the energy from the sun. Through photosynthesis, producers convert this light energy into chemical energy and sugars, which they use for food. Food not used for life processes is stored in the tissues of producers and then passed on to herbivores that eat the producers. Herbivores are first level consumers. So they're the, first, they're the first ones that get to eat because the plants, they just take that sunlight and they capture it, right? And um, they make their own food with that water and carbon dioxide. And so they store a whole bunch of energy inside of them. And then some creature comes along and eats a plant. And when I say eating a plant, that could be eating um, a tree, a seed, um, you know, a fruit, a vegetable, okay, things that are growing on those plants. So it can be an animal, it can be a person, but herbivores are those ones that are the first eaters, the ones that always are eating plants. An omnivore might be a first level consumer sometimes too, because if they eat a plant. All right, let's keep reading. Next in the food chain are carnivores and omnivores, the second level consumers. Second level consumers eat herbivores and receive the food energy stored in their bodies. Third level consumers eat second level consumers. Scavengers may be second or third level consumers as they eat organisms that have died. Decomposers are the final link in any food chain. They get energy as they break down the remains of dead plants and animals and return nutrients to the soil. All right, so we've talked about all of those factors. We've talked about producers, our plants, consumers eat to live, they have a mouth, and um, those scavengers are the, the ones that eat the dead things, right? The dead um, con consumers. And then our decomposers are the ones that break down those dead things, okay? They break down um, the remains of dead plants and dead animals, and then they return those nutrients to the soil. So let's look at this tundra food chain. And um, we start with our sun here. Here's our sun. And we can see that arrow. That's going to be our energy flow is the arrow. So the direction of the arrow is showing the direction that the energy is going for, from one thing to the next. So the direction of the arrow is very important. And the fact that we have an arrow, that is meaning energy. 
So let's look here. It says tundra food chain. The tundra is the coldest, driest ecosystem on earth. Short summers mean little plant life grows here. Many animals either migrate or hibernate during the long, long cold winters. So when we're talking about a tundra, we're talking near the poles and like the Arctic circle. If you think, uh, if you go far north, very north, um, like northern Canada, northern Asia and Europe, those are all tundra. Antarctica is tundra, okay? So nothing really big ever grows there. It never gets very warm. So we're going to look at how the energy flows through there. So we can see that we have the sunlight here, and it is going here towards a reindeer moss. And reindeer moss uses energy from the sun to make and store sugars. Producers, such as reindeer moss, form the base of tundra, the tundra food chains. So um, when I say reindeer moss, that's actually the name of a plant. Okay, it's a type of plant that uh, animals eat, uh, people can eat it as well. Um, so that is the name of it. It's named that because reindeers eat it, obviously, or uh, reindeer-like animals, like with hooves. I can see that the caribou is going to eat it next. But um, so that energy is going from the sun into that reindeer moss. So that reindeer moss has energy. And then that caribou is, it says, is our first cons level consumers. These herbivores eat reindeer moss and other producers to get energy for their life functions. So they're eating that reindeer moss and they're getting their energy. And then look who's there, a wolf. It says wolves are second level consumers. They're predators. And animals such as caribou are their prey. So that wolf is going to get its energy from eating an animal like a caribou. So he's actually a carnivore, isn't he? And then there's nothing really that eats the wolf. We call it an apex predator. He's at the top of the food chain, but he needs a lot to eat. So if there's no food, wolves will die. Um, and obviously plants will die and, and other animals die. And so we're going here to the scar scavenger here. It says scavengers, such as this Arctic gull, feed on the dead bodies of caribou, wolves, and other animals. Fungi and bacteria do the final cleanup work as they decompose the final remains of tundra organisms. So those decomposers, the fungi and the bacteria, they're going to break down all the rest of that dead stuff and add nutrients to the soil so that more producers can grow and those herbivores can eat them. And then those carnivores will eat those herbivores and those dead things that are left over. Scavengers will eat them and then decomposers break them down and we go into that cycle again. Those nutrients go back into the soil. So it just keeps going and going and going. All right, so let's look here. It says number the, pos the pictures to show their position in a food chain. Um, so I would say that the sun comes first. Do you see a sun? No sun there. So um, where does the sun send its energy? What gets the sun's energy first in those pictures? A mouse, a mushroom, a snake, or looks like that's wheat, which is a type of plant. So where does the sun's energy go? It goes to the wheat, the wheat here. Okay. If you said mushroom because you because it's a plant, remember mushrooms are decomposers. Okay. So the wheat would go first. Which one of those organisms eats the wheat? Would the wheat be eaten by the snake, the mouse, or the mushroom? Mushroom doesn't have a mouth, so it's not going to eat that. The mouse would eat it. The mouse would eat it. So that would be our second position in our food chain. That's our herbivore. And then what eats the mouse? Would the snake eat the mouse or would the mushroom eat the mouse? Yeah, the snake would eat the mouse. And then the mushroom is breaking down any of the remains of these three dead organisms. So when there's um, you know plants that are just left about that weren't eaten by the mouse, decomposers break them down. When there's parts of the mouse's body that the snake maybe spit out, I don't know, if there's something that's got bit off, the decomposers are going to break it down. And when the snake dies and its body is there, the decomposers are going to break it down. So the decomposers come last for all the living organisms when they die. Those decomposers break them down. 
As we look at our ecosystem energy flow, we need to remember that it starts with the sun. The sun gives energy to plants so that they can make food through photosynthesis. Producers then make their own food by using sunlight, water, and carbon dioxide. In the process, they are releasing oxygen and energy for animals. Let's go ahead and diagram the ecosystem energy flow. First, we know that all energy comes from the sun. So we get that sun's energy and that is the start of our ecosystem energy. Then we have that arrow that is showing the transfer of energy. So the energy from the sun is now going to that flower. That flower is a producer. So the energy goes from the sun and then the energy from the sun goes to the producer and the producer is making food. And then we have a little critter here. I think that's a mouse. And that mouse is going to eat that producer. And that means the mouse is a consumer and energy is going from the producer to that consumer. And any kind of consumer that eats a producer is either an herbivore or an omnivore. Now let's go ahead and look at that energy flow as it continues. So now we have a snake. That means the snake is getting its energy from eating the mouse. So the snake is also a consumer and any kind of consumer is, an, is either a carnivore or omnivore. So because we have two consumers, we can identify them by the order in which they eat. The herbivore or the mouse is a first level consumer. The one that eats the next animal is a second level consumer. Some food chains have only one consumer, but others could have three or four consumers depending on what each organism eats. Now that we have that energy flowing through our ecosystem, when our organisms or our living things die, their energy goes to a decomposer to break them down. So producers are broken down by decomposers, consumers are as well. And they add those nutrients back to the soil to help start the process all over again. Looking how energy flows in an ecosystem, it's important to remember that all energy starts with the sun. And our arrows show energy flow or energy transfer. The directions of the arrows show the direction of the energy. So it's important that they are showing the correct direction. So when looking at this basic ecosystem energy flow chart or food chain, I can see that the energy is going from the sun to a producer, from the producer to a consumer, from another consumer to our second level consumer. And those living organisms, the producers and consumers, when they die, energy is transferred to decomposers because decomposers break down dead things. Another way to look at our ecosystem energy flow is through a food chain. A food chain shows the transfer of food energy from one organism to the next in an ecosystem. Let's look at the transfer of energy in this food chain. So we always start at the sun and the energy is starting from the sun and going to our producer, which is grass. Then the energy from our producer goes to our first level consumer, the grasshopper. Then energy from the grasshopper goes to that mouse because the mouse is eating that grasshopper. It's a second level consumer. Energy from the mouse is going to the snake. And then the snake's energy goes to the hawk. When the grasshopper, mouse, snake, hawk, and grass all die, the decomposers are there to break down any remaining pieces because decomposers break down dead things. We are going to continue looking at how energy flows through ecosystems through food chains and food webs as we continue our studies of ecosystems. That's all for me. Take care. Peace.